One of the things you've told me is if you repeat the same thing over and over again, your neural networks literally start to, in a sense, hardwire, even though that's not the right word. It's called long-term potentiation. And it was your grandfather, was it, who first well, actually, described actually that? Actually, great, great uncle. Great, great yeah. uncle yeah. was a neuroscientist. Well, he, he first described the, the mechanism for memory. Yeah which is that when you start to form the connections between nerve cells, synapses, in response to what you experience, that those synapses may stay or they may go, but if you strengthen them with repetition, they stay. And uh, he, he, I, he didn't do any experiments. He just basically took a guess and he was right, I think. And he was right. But <laughs> yeah. now we know that you really can create the neural networks for a healthy life and you know, to extend your life uh, change the biological markers of aging. After we published this idea, I went to Aspen and I spoke at the Aspen Brain Institute. And now, actually, we are almost ready to start this project that we are uh, using the acronym SBTI, Self-Directed right. Biological uh, uh, Transformation Initiative. Um, what are we going to measure? And what you know, I know what we are going to do is we are going to take people plug them in to the perfect health program at Chopra Center yes. with a daily routine. And then we are going to measure their biological transformation. In what way are we going to do that? Yeah, we're going to measure, we're going to quantify the changes that take place at every level, starting with genetics. So we will be looking at the changes in gene activity across the entire genome. We'll be looking at changes in certain proteins involved with Alzheimer's disease, proteins involved with aging. We're going to look directly at whether genes are, are changed by, what are, by epigenetics, where you actually more permanently change gene activity for the good because you had a healthy lifestyle. So none of this has really been done in such a big way where you actually have folks undergoing the program at the Chopra Center and then saying, okay, now let's measure what's happening using the most state-of-the-art tools and resources we have from and the, the human genome project. the best institutions, right. of course, led by, we are the uh, co-directors right. of this program, but we are going to recruit the best scientists right. who can collaborate with us. We're going for the very top scientists in epigenetics and, and in, and in uh, neuroplasticity. And this has huge implications for healthcare, for healthcare costs, for insurance companies, medical insurance companies, <coughs> for the huge medical industrial complex, when we really say it's the true health reform is to self-direct your biological destiny in a way. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, there are evolutionary biologists who want to think, you don't have a chance, it's all random, you're just a robot, hope for the best, you're, you know, it's, it's pie in the sky to think you have a chance to affect your own health. And this is crazy thinking, just crazy thinking, because we know already that lifestyle choices, meditation, good diet, exercise, changes gene yoga, activity. Medi yeah, yeah. yeah, yoga, meditation, that, that this does change activity at the genetic level, the biochemical level, the neurochemical level. And um, the, in, in terms of our evolution of our species, the very next generation, theoretically, based on what we see in other organisms, mice and insects, whatever, if the same thing happens in humans, and there's no reason to believe it doesn't, Theoretically, the choices we make in life, how we view life, and how that changes our genetics can be inherited in the very next generation separate of our DNA itself. In other words, the gene activity is inherited. This is the next big era. Um, the gene of this activities. The gene inherited. activities. Inherited. There was a study where mice. This has would, implications yeah. for the evolution of the human species. Right. So it's, so it's self-directed biological transformation of you as an individual for better health. But, but downstream, the there's every reason to believe, and this is still very early days, so we don't want to oversell what we know, but you will affect the very next generation. And just one experiment I'll tell you about that was published recently. Mice were trained to be afraid of the smell of cherries, okay? And uh, because when they smelt the cherry, they got a little, sh uh, this, this is a study that was done uh, somewhere recently, uh, they got a little shock in their foot when they smelt cherries. The mice that were born from those mice had never been trained to be afraid of the smell, yet you let them smell cherries, they're afraid.